Welcome back to Radar Chaos. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics of radar air traffic controlling. We'll skip past these beginner maze levels because they don't really need much explanation. We'll jump right into uh, what I call easy approach control. We'll select full realism. Full realism gives you realistic aircraft speeds, which can take some getting used to. The speed that you assign a pilot is not necessarily the speed that you're going to see on the radar screen. That takes some getting used to. You can choose to select it or not. Realistic data tags. The tags require some getting used to. If you take a look at this image right here, I see an aircraft that's at 5,700 feet with a speed of 280 knots. If that's a bit puzzling to you, you might want to deselect realistic data tags. Moving on to a realistic aircraft targets, I would leave that selected. If you deselect realistic air traffic targets, you instead of seeing that tiny diamond shape, what you'd see is an actual aircraft. Realistic aircraft delay is quite important. In radar controlling, when you assign a pilot an altitude change, for example, the pilot requires five seconds to reach forward and change the autopilot. The aircraft needs another five seconds to reduce the power and lower the nose. All in all, it's going to take 15 or 20 seconds before you observed the assignment that you gave the pilot. This can be frustrating for the new controller. You wonder if the program's working or if the pilot's even listening. I won't select emergencies or bad weather in this simulation today. We'll leave everything else as it is, and away we go. I'm going to skip this tutorial because I don't want the supervisor popping up any more than he needs to. So from the beginning here, we have four arrivals on our screen. I see one over here at the very right. He's uh, not quite on screen yet. We'll focus on this one right here. TXR-172 is the aircraft's name. They're descending out of 6,300. Their speed is 280 knots. When this aircraft arrived on my screen, it was descending to 9,000 feet only. 9,000 feet because if I had a slower aircraft, such as a Cessna, that would have come to me at 8,000 feet. So there's some built-in separation from the very beginning. Right away, I assigned this aircraft 6,000 feet only. And the reason for that was because of this terrain here, not below 6,000 feet. So there could likely be a mountain right here, up to as high as 6,000 feet. So we don't want to go below 6,000 anywhere in that area. Once the aircraft is clear of that, uh, that brownish colored area, I then want to descend the aircraft down to 3,000 feet. So I bring up the control panel simply by clicking on the aircraft's target. I click the down arrow, and as you can see, the aircraft has now been assigned 3,000 feet. Submit. The aircraft was still descending to 4,000 when I did that. Over here, I see two airplanes are in a bit of a conflict. This is a Cessna that's uh, arriving to the same airport as this 737. And my solution is going to be to get this Cessna down as low as I possibly can, and the 737 will ride down slowly over top. So for now, the 737 only gets 7,000 feet. I have the necessary built-in 1,000 feet of vertical separation between these two planes. In fact, I've got a little bit more than 1,000 feet. As long as I have at least 1,000, everything's fine. Okay, it is time to turn this 737 onto their, the base leg, which is 90 degrees, right triangle, or right angle to their localizer path, which is 270. And I'm going to slow the aircraft to 200 knots. And it's shown here, I've assigned 200 knots. Watch how long it takes the aircraft to respond to this instruction. See, nothing's happening yet. Pilot's got to make the inputs. The aircraft has to respond. The radar has to observe the change. Now I see the aircraft beginning a turn. And that turn is very visible when you look at these history dots that show where the aircraft was. I've got work to do. Up here, uh, I've had a departure off of uh, runway 36, and the SID describes that the SID, the departure procedure, is climb straight ahead to 7,000. I'm going to give this pilot a turn towards their outbound point. 260 should do. 
Now, how do I know where this pile is supposed to go? Well, I, I mouse over and I see that blue line which indicates where the aircraft is supposed to go. I've got a lot going on here, so I'll just get some work done and I'll talk a little bit more in a moment. This conflict is resolving itself pretty well. This aircraft is very high, but there's not much I can do about it at the moment. I have to be careful that these aircraft don't exit my uh, airspace through the top of the screen because above the top of my screen is another air traffic controller's airspace and they don't want to be seeing my planes in their airspace. Over here you'll see there's an arrival indicator. I'll have Cessnas arriving at 8,000 feet and jets arriving at 9,000 feet. So I really can't give this departure any higher than 7,000 feet yet. I know I'm supposed to get this departure up to 10,000, but I can't do that yet. I have to protect for the possibility of an arriving Cessna. So he'll stay at 7,000 feet for a few more miles, which is quite typical in real life too. Okay, back to this situation here. Notice these faint arrows, 330 it says. That's a suggested intercept heading. I'm going to use that suggested intercept heading. 330, submit. My work here is done, just about. Oops, I forgot to give the pilot their necessary approach clearance, which is very much like a landing clearance. Now my work is done. These lines are not meant to be followed. Uh, it wasn't intended that you would try to vector planes along that arrow. It's just an indicator that shows what heading is a good intercept heading. Anything that is 30 degrees or less is ideal for a pilot. Anything more than 30 degrees and you will be shot. Okay, CAT 904 is doing well. They're descending for 3,000 feet. They're still at 250 knots. That's too fast. The rule is, you, the actual real world rule is not above 200 knots within 10 miles of an airport when 3,000 feet or lower. Ooh, got the nice vectoring thumbs up from my supervisor. In this simulation, we make it a rule that the aircraft must be established at 200 knots prior to intercepting the localizer. Now look here, this 737 is showing 210 knots. Well, that's because we've got realistic airspeed selected. The pilot is, in fact, flying an assigned speed of 200. But because of airspeed errors inside of the cockpit, the pilot is actually going a little faster. If you look up here at this Airbus that is at 7,000 feet, they're actually at a speed of 250 knots. But because of their altitude, this airspeed error they're actually grounding a speed of 290. I'm going to send them up to 10,000 feet now because it's safe to do so. I'm going to give this aircraft a 030 intercept plus the approach clearance. Lots to do here. I'll turn this aircraft onto their base leg. Start this one down to 3,000 feet. Start this one down to 4,000. Actually, I'll start them down to uh, 8,000 for the moment. I'm worried that this Airbus is going to overtake the Seneca. Lots to do. I am going to bring this one down to 3,000 feet. This is what happens when you talk too much while you're trying to control airplanes. I have a departure and I have some terrain to think about. I'm going to assign this aircraft a heading of 130 and I'm going to give them 10,000 feet right away. I'm very confident that I can keep this aircraft clear of my arrival path. So on up to 10,000 they go and I'm going to give them a hard right turn to stay clear of that terrain. This aircraft is on the perfect intercept heading. Their speed, let me click and see, is 200 knots. Their altitude is 3,000. They've got the approach clearance. Life's good. My supervisor is going to be thrilled with my work. I have a bit of a situation developing here. I've got a slow Cessna that's going to be followed by two jets. Now in real life I think I would probably want to bring these jets in first. 
but because this is just a fun game, I'm going to make the jets have to follow the Cessna. So what I'm going to do for the moment is slow them down to 200 so that they don't get too far off of my screen. I'm going to start bringing down this next arrival down to 6,000 feet. Sometimes you just have too much traffic. I, right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arrivals in the queue, and I could very well run myself out of airspace in a moment here if I'm not careful. There's lots of ways that I can manage that. I can see right now this PAR 579, they've got some troubles because they've got six airplanes to follow. So what I normally do in this situation is I'll, I'll take them on a scenic tour of my airspace. I'm going to give them a right turn of heading 270. I'm going to take them over top of the airport and bring them on the left side, the west side. All I'm basically doing here is buying myself some time. I'm stalling him. If I could stop him in midair, I would, but I can't do that to an airplane. That's impossible. So I just give them more flying miles, and that's my way of, of delaying them. I'm going to tell the Cessna to go as fast as they can. And I'm going to start them early on their intercept heading and give them their approach clearance. This Airbus is going to be slowed down as well. There's no reason for them to be hurtling through the sky at 290 knots. Okay, I think that's a good place to wrap up this tutorial. It gives you an idea of what you're supposed to do. I'm going to end it before I uh, get in trouble with my supervisor here. Be sure and watch the next tutorial where I cover some more advanced airspace. Thank you.